Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's uh, Kickoff Labs Marketing Chat. Uh, today, we're going to be talking with uh, Paul Berkovic from uh, Scribble Post on the growth hacks they used uh, to get uh, to get their way to tens of thousands of leads. The slide says thousands. Uh, we're not going to use a specific number, but we'll say they've been really happy and, and gotten tens of thousands of leads. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is a little bit more of an advanced use case with Kickoff Labs. So you'll see a very interesting way that they used uh, the Kickoff Labs platform to boost the, vi the virality of the campaign and get uh, probably way more leads than they would have uh, in it with a traditional approach. Um, and so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about some standard tips of how they promoted the campaign, how they uh, how they uh, how they engaged with people throughout the campaign, and we'll show some examples throughout it. Um, we like these conversations to be interactive and more spontaneous. So if you have questions um, about the topics, about things we're talking about, feel free to post them uh, into the chat. And Izzy from Kickoff Labs, who's here, will be keeping an eye on the chat. Uh, he'll be answering some of the questions in real time. And he'll look for opportunities to uh, bring up the conversation and the questions live for uh, Paul and I to answer as we go. So. Um, like I said, uh, if you know, go ahead in the chat, introduce yourself, uh, maybe give a one-line talk uh, pitch about your company, um, and ask your question um, to us so we can we can get uh, we can get to them uh, before the end of the chat. So, I am Josh Legard, the co-founder of Kickoff Labs. Uh, we help make it really easy for people to set up uh, viral campaigns like the one you're going to see today, um, but just. Really generally, uh, people use our product for product launches, for contests, for engaging an existing email lists, to get people to refer friends, to get your customers to spread the word for you on your behalf, because that really is the most effective marketing. And so we believe in creating tools that make that kind of engagement, that word of mouth uh, referral mechanism really simple to, to use and to deploy uh, for any sort of uh, for any sort of contest. Um, and like I said, we're going to be talking today with uh, Paul Berkovic. So he's a co-founder at Scribble Post. And so I'd like uh, Paul to, to say hi at this point. Hey, Josh. How are you doing? Good. It's great to have you here on our chat. Great I'd like to be. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I want to start and just ask a little bit about your background. Um, are you? Uh, can you tell people who are here? Do you have a background in marketing? Do you come from more of the technical side? If you could kind of tell people a little bit about your story, how you got to uh, the position you're at at Scribble Post. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, look, actually, I do have a technical background. Uh, it started off. I studied engineering, electrical engineering, and computer science at university, but. Uh, I very quickly moved into, I guess, sales and marketing, tech sales and marketing. I spent some time working for Dell at a you know, big, large corporate, some experience that I think uh, has probably done me well over the years. But ever since then, uh, it's been a matter of moving from you know, big corporate business into something that's you know, more and more digital and also uh, more and more, I guess, kind of consumer facing. So after Dell, I actually worked for a smaller user experience design company as a client services director. Um, then I actually founded and started my own services business, small services business. It was a growth agency called Greenfield Avenue, and it was helping tech businesses grow and find ways, unique ways that they could grow. Uh, so everything is always about, about growth for, for me. Um, but then I, you know, I quickly discovered that services businesses are, are very hard to scale. Some, some might disagree, but I, I think that uh, many traditional services businesses are pretty tricky when it comes to scaling them. And uh, I had the opportunity to join a tech startup, which was called Smart Sparrow, which is actually an ed tech company. And that was a, a really interesting and awesome journey. Um, but then I uh, bumped into my, my current co-founder, Alon Novi, who, who started Scribble Post. And you know, productivity has been an area for me that I've been looking at for many years, and I guess kind of struggling with before school post for many years. And uh, I had the opportunity to join, and I just couldn't. Uh, I couldn't uh, say no. It was uh, it was too too compelling of an idea, and uh, I was I was just really excited about it. So yeah, my background I guess is, is technical. Um, I found my way into sales and marketing just through I guess a desire to. to understand how people behaved and uh, what drove them and try like trying to crack that nut around how businesses grow um, something I guess I'm still trying to <laughs> trying to solve but um, yeah I'm not sure like uh, 
in marketing these days, I, I find that uh, a lot of people that have this kind of, um, you know, deep interest in marketing, not all of them actually come from a marketing background or a communications background. They mm -hmm. seem to come from all walks of life. No, your uh, your journey sounds your journey is fairly uh, fairly similar to a lot of people we've had um, we've had on before that have started a larger company have gone and taken steps down uh, smaller and smaller companies as they go um, until they find something that uh, really resonates with them and it sounds like you found something with uh, with Scrum Post that resonates both uh, with a you know kind of a personal uh, personal goal as well as uh, it, for your own career as well as sort of professionally as sort of the topic and area that you're interested in so. Uh, having said that, you, know, you talked really briefly about you know productivity and, and that kind of thing that get, gives us a hint of what Scribble Post is. Um, but could you talk a little bit about? I'm going to jump around here about what exactly is Scribble Post and where did the idea come from? Yeah, absolutely. So I guess uh, in a in a in a couple of sentences, Scribble Post is actually we're calling it the world's first productivity network. But essentially, it's a it's a software product that allows you to work more productively on your own, and especially with other people. Um, how we do that is actually pretty unique, I think, and that's what sets it apart. But uh, you know, when we look at the problem space, we you know we've spoken to a lot of different people and tried to really understand what their challenges are at work and what the things are that they would most like to improve at work and. You know, Alon spent you know 10, 15 years implementing project management software and productivity solutions. Some of which he built, um, some of which other people built, and watched them kind of fail over and over again in these kind of corporate environments. And uh, you know, that's one journey. And then from my journey, you know, I was a user of productivity tools, and you know, I cycled through so many different note-taking products and task management tools, always looking for the next one. And uh, you know when I when I saw what what Alon was doing on School Post, it really grabbed my attention. So essentially, you know, we looked at um, the way people are working and collaborating, um, and generally trying to get things done. And we actually conducted you know thousands of surveys, like two and a half thousand surveys, um, digging into this. And what became really clear to us, or what became what emerged as a as a constant theme, other than the fact that people are feeling very overwhelmed with having too much to do. Uh, you know, they don't have time to get everything they want done. Uh, there's too much information that they're trying to process and manage. Uh, you know, we're online all the time and we're just completely, I guess if we're online, it actually means we're, we're interruptible all the time. And there's an increasing number of ways people can interrupt us, whether it's email, phone, text, S, you know, SMS, social media, etc. So the bottom line there is we, we discovered a couple of things. One is, you know, no one has cracked this work management problem that people have yet. And what also emerged was it actually became obvious to us that people were just talking about email uh, a hell of a lot. They were saying like, this is a big source of, of, of problem for them. Um, you know, uh, they really wanted to improve the way they engage with and manage their email. So we digged into that problem. We found out that it turns out email, it's just, it's actually a terrible tool for getting work done. It's not a good way of managing your work. You know, it's built as a communications product. It's, it's, it is the only, it is the only product you can, uh, you can be sure other people have, right? Mm -hmm. but, um, and, and that kind of is what leads to this problem. So, you know, when we looked at, uh, at, at how people use email, it turns out that, you know, maybe you've convinced the people in your immediate team to use the same tools you are, but when you look at the real network of people that you work with, uh, customers, suppliers, freelancers, even family and friends, those people are not using the same tools you are, so you have no choice but to use email. But the challenge, of course, with that is that, um, you know, number one, we spend a huge amount of time on email, which is not good, if you, especially if you agree it's not a good tool for getting work done. And number two, we end up having to use all of these other tools to compensate for this, note takers, task managers, project management systems, you know, and even other communication tools. So we, 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 with Scroll Post, we brought that together and we created what we call the, the world's first productivity network. And essentially, it allows you to, I mean, if you think about Facebook as a social network that lets you capture and manage social information, you can think about a productivity network as a way to capture and share productivity and work-related information like your notes, tasks, projects, emails, all of that in one place. Um, and I guess there's, there's two key things about it. The first is um, you can work with anyone. So the whole point here is that you don't need to convince other people to use Scribble Post to work productively with them. 
it actually doesn't matter you know, what business they're in, what tools they're using, where they are in the world. You can use Scribble Post to work with anyone. That's a huge differentiator. And number two, the way we've uh, built it is we've kind of modeled it on the way people naturally scribble notes on paper. So it's a very free form, free flowing, flexible experience that works into your, your natural workflow of what you're doing already. So those are, those are kind of the big things and uh, you know, at risk of taking up the entire interview talking about school posts, I'm gonna leave it there. But if you've got any other questions about it, just let me know. No, it's a, it's a fantastic description. I, I do wanna go back because the conversations always uh, go in interesting directions. And I think some of, pe some of the people that are, are watching and will watch this in the future, might have picked up on something you said, which was that you guys, you know, you had this idea in a space and you conducted thousands of, uh, of surveys uh, for people. This is before you did um, this launch campaign with, uh, with, with Kickoff Labs, I'm, I'm assuming, correct? Well, actually, we used Kickoff Labs to, to gather um, a whole bunch of leads with, uh, from whom we, you know, we sent surveys to. So, so both, actually. We did surveys beforehand um, but we also did surveys with some of the people who, who signed up through the Kickoff Labs campaign. Okay, so now I have more questions <laughs> related to this. It's, so it's fantastic to dive in. So before you, you started gathering emails with Kickoff Labs, who did you decide to survey and how did you find those people? It's a question that comes up as people think about validating their ideas before they do a larger campaign. And it sounds like that's a lot of what you guys are doing is validating this concept and the ideas that you had and the problems that people had. And so, how did you go about? Uh, how did you go about finding the right people, the right uh, the, the right folks to validate the ideas with? And I think this will come back later when you talk about how you marketed uh, scroll posts ultimately. Right. Um, well, I think you know we, we we kind of subscribe to the lean startup model. We we kind of believe in that. from it, it can still be valuable. Um, so we just wanted to get out as early as possible um, and start validating our ideas. I mean, I don't think it matters how much experience you have and how much you've kind of um, thought about or planned an idea out. You never know how people are going to receive that idea. You never know what people are going to say about it or whether they're going to um, love it or hate it. So you want to start testing not only your product, but also your messaging, I think, as early as possible. So, And, that, and that's what we wanted to do. So. I guess to answer your question around like how we how we found the right people, um, you know that's a that's a great question. It, like like with most of the stuff we did, we created a bunch of hypotheses around who we thought um, you know would be interested in our concept, and then we systematically went and, and tested it, and uh, and you know tried to see where we get the best result you know from from doing that. And then when we started to get like a hit or a spike on something that we were doing, whether it was even anecdotally, where you know a certain group of people start to say really positive things, um, or even you know if it was based on data, then we dig you know we dig a little bit more into that and start asking a few more questions, I suppose. So uh, you know we, we started out with our, our own immediate networks, of course. I think that's where most most of these uh, most people start, and then we grew we grew out from there. And that kind of gets us to the kickoff labs part of the story. And so what made you guys? Um, decide that you wanted to do uh, this sort of viral launch campaign in in the first place. Yeah, well, um, I guess there's kind of two elements to that. The first is, as I mentioned, we just wanted to get out early and start testing ideas, and uh, you know, it turned out that actually Kickoff Labs was a great tool for doing that. But also, um, you know, as a as a lean startup, you want to leverage every person you have as much as possible because you know you don't want to you know you don't have the budget to go into a full scale marketing campaign an acquisition campaign mm -hmm. um, each person is precious not not just from a um, you know a kind of user perspective but from a learning perspective as well and so um, you know I, I became really kind of actually a little bit obsessive about <laughs> about doing one of these campaigns because uh, I wanted to make sure that every time we signed someone up, we were able to get them to tell other people about it. I guess that, that was kind of at the essence of it. Um, and, that, and that led me on a, quite frankly, on a pretty deep search online 
um, and asking other people to find the, uh, the right tool, we were very determined not to spend our development resources building something new when I was sure it was out there um, being done already. And for a time, I, I couldn't really, I couldn't really um, you know, find anything, to be honest with you. It wasn't that easy to find because like, you, you never know like, what search terms to use and exactly what, you know, what it's going to come up under. But I came across Kickoff Labs and, uh, and it was a no-brainer, actually. Um, uh, it, was a, it, was a, uh, it was exactly what we were looking for. Talk about that for a second. So, I mean, I, you kind of got at my, one of my next questions, which is why uh, you were looking for a platform in the first place instead of uh, instead of building yourself. It was primarily because you were sounded like it's, you said it was because you were sure that something must exist at this point, and it also sounded that you wanted to keep your development team focused on the actual product and iterating on the, the product behind the scenes. You know, I, I had read some awesome articles about some viral campaigns, or let me rephrase that. I had read some articles about some awesome, you know, referral and viral campaigns. And I thought to myself, you know, I want some of that. Like, that sounds really good. Um, and then, but implementing that is, a, is another thing altogether. I think that, um, you know, it, it's a pretty tricky thing to get right, actually. Um, there's a lot of technology involved. There's a lot of human factors involved. So it's all about the behavior of people, and that's often um, can be you know pretty hard to predict. So um, I knew that we we wanted to have that mechanism that allowed people to bring their their networks once we once we got them on board. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but um, you know, I also knew that we didn't want to get into the the reads of of figuring out the mechanics behind how to build a viral platform. I mean, our, our devs are fantastic. I'm sure they would like have had a good crack at it, but you know, we're building a, um, a productivity platform and you know, anyone you ask that's in that space will tell you that that is a entirely non-trivial problem to solve. Huh? That is not, well, you know, we're working on the problem of what is the best way to work? And that's a daily challenge for people. It's a very personal challenge. There's no one size fits all for productivity. Yep. Um, it's a complex thing to get right. So it's not even. It's not only that it's a complex software, but it also has to be very simple for people to use. And uh, I think that was a big enough challenge for us to take on without having to figure out, you know, a whole bunch of other you know, technical challenges. So I mean, that's kind of the, the the desire, you know, the the reasoning behind why we we didn't want to, you know, build it ourselves. Does that make sense? No, yeah, absolutely. And it, I think it resonates with a lot of people out there. Um, so let's talk about. The, the the landing page and, and, and the copy you guys used. I, I know that you guys used several iterations of both thank you pages and landing pages, um, and you guys are probably testing throughout the campaign. Um, but when I see the page here, you were using Kickoff Labs behind the scenes VR API to collect an email address and power the referral, and we'll get to that. But I want to first know about how you guys came up with the imagery, the brand, the copy that's on this page. Um, because when I read through the copy on the page and the headlines, um, and hopefully people can see that on, on here, and we'll, the slides will also be available for, for download afterwards. Um, but when I read it, some things that stand out are, you know, I see join the world's, uh, the, the, join, join the world's productivity network, and it says no more information overload. And then I see, you know, the, 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 next, the next sort of things my, that t grab my eyes are join now to reserve your spot and get early access. And so, you know, if people scan for headlines, those are what they see first. The page is really simple. It's clean. It feels intuitive. I assume these are all things you really you were trying to convey in the page. So, talk a little about how you came up with the copy and the brand messaging that's that's on these pages. Yeah, sure. So, um, I guess there's a few questions in that. One is, you know, the uh, you know, it started with it really started with a problem. You know, we we knew that people had this. You know, we talked a bit earlier about the research and the problem space. Um, we, we, we know that people have this problem, right? We know that people struggle with the way they manage their work and they want to be more efficient and productive. Um, and it's a very broadly uh, experienced problem. It's very widespread. So I guess that, that's kind of where all of this started and that's where the product came from. But just because, you, <clears throat> just because you understand the problem very well and you may even have a great solution, that certainly doesn't mean that you, you understand how people are talking about it, or you know, how, you know what they want, what they need to be told to understand your solution. And I think that's one of the 
big problems that tech startups in particular often fall into, which is that you know they they're using their own language, um, which makes sense to them and maybe doesn't make as much sense to everyone else. <coughs> Pardon me. Or <coughs> they um you know they invent new language, um, which again is kind of meaningful to them and uh, maybe their friends, but not so meaningful to other people. So you want to be really careful with that and make sure that you're you know you are talking the right language and that you're appealing to as many people as possible. So. You know, we thought about we thought about the core concept. You know, the core concept really is around the productivity network, um, and that's something that you know we, we we did come up with. That that is a new concept and a new idea, and uh, really a new technology. And um, you know, but we still weren't sure. Like, is that is that terminology something that we should use to to talk about? Is it like should we talk you know more deeper about the features? Um, you know, should it be entirely like benefit based? And we, we had conversations with people, like we talked to people in our target audiences. Um, we understood like what, what made sense for them. Um, and uh, yeah, like we tested it. Like we just really wanted to understand the way people were thinking about it. Like for example, if you ask people um, how, they, how they manage their work, they'll often tell you about um, how they manage their tasks but they won't. They don't think about it as collaboration, even though they're managing tasks that are, you know, specific to them and specific to uh, the things that they've delegated and things other people need to get done for them. They don't always talk about that as collaboration. That you know, it's just it's just task management to them. But actually, it is collaboration. You know, they're working with a whole bunch of other people, and it's a it's a it's a group challenge. You know. Um, so you know, but you've got to you've got to understand these things from people. You've got to understand the way they they think about the problem and the way they you know they, they talk about it as well. So yeah, we we spoke to people, we tested it, we ran experiments online. Um, uh, you know, we did some A/B testing, of course. Uh, and in terms of how that actually comes to life visually, that was uh, you know we, we we obviously got some help with that. Like it's a clean design. I'd love to take uh, total credit for that. But we had some help with you know designing the page. But we knew we wanted to be um, really clean. Like we didn't want it to be uh, complex. We didn't want it to be too heavy on the on the messaging. Um, we just wanted to get our idea across in a in a clean and simple way, and then just optimize from there. I suppose it's important not to have information overload when you're promoting no information <laughs> overload. Exactly right. Exactly right. On the page, so uh, you 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 talk to people. You're trying to use their language uh, from the the surveys you did. You evolve that messaging over time. People sign up, and then you had a couple different uh, schemes that you used on the thank you pages. And so let's talk about um, this kind of iteration of the thank you page. And so what it says here is, uh, thanks, your spot on the waitlist has been reserved. Your waitlist position. Uh, you're in the first group of the world's for the world's productivity network. Let others know, and then you've got some some tweets there that you uh, added into the added into the thank you page. Um, kind of talk about this initial design and the initial thank you experience sharing experience that you have. Cool. Yeah. I mean, as, as I said earlier, like you know, I mean, for anyone that's built a new business or a new website, like you, you probably know that like getting getting your initial traffic is, is it's really not that easy. Actually, I mean, you know, you've got to you've got to find that thing that works for you, and when you get it there, you want to make the most of it. So we really wanted to make sure that we had a like a, a strong conversion rate, which we we ended up um, getting to be really really strong actually, and um, and but once once we got them there. Um, you know, they have this moment of, you know, people have this moment of excitement, I guess, where they, they, they're excited about something new, they join, they enter their email address, and you, you know, you want to, what are you going to do then? And, and uh, I think that the, the best thing to do is, is take it a step further. Like, you can say, thanks very much, you know, see you, or you can say, actually, you know what, let's, let's give you a little bit more information, or let's, um, you know, um, do, do something else for us or tell other people about it. And of course, that, that's, as you know, that's where this concept comes from out of, of like, these campaigns. For that first iteration of the, the thank you page, um, you know, the, the page that people see after they first sign up, you know, we, we um, I guess we just wanted to reinforce the, the message of school post, but also just really give people that opportunity to, to tell other people about it. And I think that first iteration, it gave them a, a little bit of um, social proof, showing them like kind of how many other people were, um, you know, signed up. We felt that was a, a strong message to send people so that they weren't like on their own. And of course, as that number grows, it gets better and better. 
Um, and, and then we wanted to give people uh, the ability to share. But we had a pretty um, interesting idea around that. We, we wanted to give people the, the ability to tweet about it because Twitter has been a very strong platform for us. So uh, we wanted to take it a step further with our thank you page and give people the ability to select different specific tweets that they could, um, that they could use to tell other people because for a couple of reasons. One, we had the, you know, the hypothesis that um, if, it's, if it's more, if they have options, they'll be more likely to select one and push it out. But you know, different messages resonate with different people. So that was another learning opportunity for us. We could see which messages were uh, most often clicked on. We could see which messages were uh, that did the best in bringing people back to the to the website. Um, and and so we, we spent a little bit of time actually kind of um, I guess hacking that page and making it what we wanted and really customizing it um, to a significant degree. Yeah. So I want to. Yeah, so I want to. Two things stood out to me there. One is the positive of. Taking somebody who uh, uh, is an engaged yeah, user at that moment, that like moment, so. somebody signed up, they've said yes to something, and they agreed with something you've done, and the concept of then taking them is not just saying thank you, but the concept of saying, now could you do one more thing? And I think that's that is that actually, I mean, that's you know, obviously a core uh, thing that we that we promote, but it is absolutely the right time to engage somebody is when they've already made one yes in your funnel and say, hey, now let's take the next step, and then. Uh, the steps you're giving them make a lot of sense. I, I like giving people the choice of what uh, of a couple of different messages to to promote, um, and I like uh, I like show, showing them that that there's some social proof there. Um, now let's talk about this uh, the the next version of the sign up page. And so this is uh, a little bit uh, a little bit more custom. It's something that you guys built, and I want to talk about the the referral scheme that's happening here on this page. And so you've got. Sign up done. There's a video. You're getting some more. You're giving them some more information, and you're saying grow your personal productivity network, and you're asking for email addresses. So, talk about what happens here. Well, let me talk about for a second actually <clears throat> why we developed it's the second page, and you can see uh, that, that you know there's more investment involved in that page now. Mm -hmm. The reason was because the other page worked. You know, it was an experiment we ran that that got good success, and people were tweeting. Crazily, like people love that, and in fact, that 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 tweet mechanism, we actually ended up building in the ability to have um, you know, say, twenty tweets hidden in the background, and they automatically, uh, sorry, they randomly, you know, it randomly, the page randomly served different tweets to each person, and we even optimized the number of tweets that were there. Like we 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 could have had as many tweets as you wanted, but we found that um, giving people choice of which tweet to serve was good, but you didn't want to give them too much choice, so we narrowed it back to two. You know. Um, but those two tweets actually randomly served from a, a pool of other tweets so that we could test a whole bunch of different messages. But people loved it. Like, a lot of people tweeted um, from that page, and, uh, and that was awesome because, like, obviously, you know, we were getting hundreds of tweets every week um, sent out to people's networks, which was really significant. Um, and because of, because of that strong response, we decided, like, let's invest more to the point that we actually, you know, produced a, a, a video uh, that you can see on the, you know, the, the slide that you were showing earlier on that newly designed page. That's actually a video that gets served to people after, because we thought, like, how can we really capitalize on this moment that people have had after they sign up? They're excited. Like, our website's pretty lean on information. It, like, it tells them just enough to kind of um, come on board. It doesn't really give them essays of data about, you know, or, or, or information about, like, what we do. Um, so we wanted to, I guess, reward people and encourage them to be more involved. So we built, we, you know, we had this video produced, which tells you about, you know, school post and the productivity network. Um, but then we also thought, you know what, this is like, this is that critical moment. Um, and, and what else can we get them to do? So not only did we, you know, in, up the design of the page, uh, we got the video, we kept those tweets there for people to tell other people socially. But we really kind of took it to the next level because we, we, we felt that, particularly with the, the concept of a productivity network, which is really about you know, working efficiently with those, the people in your personal productivity network, but beyond just your immediate team. So not just people in your team and your business, but anyone you work with, you know, customers, suppliers, all that stuff. So we wanted to give them direct access to, we wanted to give them the ability to tell other people directly we got this idea that maybe we could actually build into the page the ability for them to just put in 
the email address directly, right? And so we, you know, we, we kind of invested in a little bit of uh, development effort in doing that. And, and, and as you can see there, built in an email form that uh, allowed people to just put in the email addresses of the people they work with directly into the thank you page and invite them directly from there. So um, that was kind of the thinking we went to, and, and that was actually hugely successful for us as well. So let's let, let just recap the steps in the process. So somebody comes to your first landing page. They're interested yep. in joining the productivity network. They, they, the message resonates with them. They individually sign up. Then they come yes. to the thank you page, um, and yes. you're giving them some more information, which I like. It's, it's kind of using that engagement to share some more information. You're doing the same sort of social proof with a wait list number. Uh, but at this point, now you're saying, now directly add some, some people to your productivity network, which I think really fits your use case, right? Because you're asking them to grow their productivity network. The tool is going to be better for them if there's more people on it. Um, and you know, so there's a benefit to them for doing it. And now let's say I enter five of my friend's email addresses here. What would happen for those five people at this point? Okay, great questions. They would get, um, they would, so we, I mean, we heavily used, <laughs> as you probably know, we, like we heavily leveraged the Kickoff Labs platform uh, here. And uh, I must say, you know, it turned out to be a, a very flexible platform for us that allowed us to do all these customizations, which was awesome. Um, <clears throat> so a couple of things, um, uh, you know, from a, from a user perspective, like anyone that, if you got invited, you would receive an email um, saying, you know, hey, Josh has invited you to a uh, school post. This is what it's about. I click here. And when those people clicked, they would get sent, they would get sent to um, the uh, website, obviously. <clears throat> and then if they signed up, they would go through like a similar process. But in the background, we we're also capturing these email addresses. But we captured the email addresses by putting them into a another Kickoff Labs list. So everything was actually managed in the background by Kickoff Labs. And then, uh, you know, we did an integration with MailChimp, which is what, you know, served out the emails. So you kept, you maintained then two separate lists, people that, that did the sign, completed the sign-up step on their own, which people who are probably a much stronger indicator that like, hey, I was really interested, I completed the sign-up step on my own. And then you kept a separate list of people that had just been referred but maybe hadn't completed the step on their own. So you could you could message both of those lists differently, I assume. That's exactly right. So not only did we, you know, we kept two different, so we could message them differently and we could also understand, you know, which people came in naturally, organically through like Google or Twitter or whatever, and then which people um, came in because they came in as a result of a referral. But we also um, managed to, we were tracking stuff as well using Kickoff Labs. So we, we, you know, we made sure that each time a tweet was served, we knew which tweet it was. We made sure we could um, check, you know, uh, whether or not people had played the video. Um, and all of this stuff was actually stored in, in Kickoff Labs. So I could, you know, we could literally trace back and see like, where did this person come from? Where, like person B signed up as a referral, uh, awesome. Where did they come from? Well, it was from person A. All right, cool. What what messages were they showing? Like, what tweets were they showing? You know, did they watch the video? All of this stuff was tracked in the background. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So let's back over. So that's the specific campaign, and I'm showing some some close ups on the page so people can see. This is the the section about referring others, uh, grow your personal productivity network. We were asking for the email address. And then these are the tweets you're talking about, uh, where you've got you know a pool of tweets, and you're pulling from this random pool of tweets, encouraging people to share a specific message, which I really love this concept uh, that you did. And we, yeah. we talked about that earlier. Um, and you know, here's if they clicked on sharing on Facebook, you'd have this message, which is encouraging people to join the world's productivity network. Um, and so I want to talk about um, I want to talk about how to kind of back up and the initial step in the in the funnel. Um, how you guys, besides the referral campaign, how did you go about marketing, uh, marketing this and sort of seeding the campaign with an initial set of visitors? Right, um, that's a good question. Really, it was um, you know it was heavily social media based. I mean, that's that's the bottom line. Uh, we did run a, uh, we did also run a. Well, let me let me do it in order. I guess you know we 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 did a little bit of social work on uh, LinkedIn. 
and we did uh, that on uh, on Twitter as well. As I said, Twitter Twitter is great for our audience, right? It's it's business. It's, there's a lot of like professionals on there, people that are you know optimizers, and they really want to improve the way they work. And there's like a lot of there's a lot of activity around that on Twitter. So you know we love we love Twitter. We're still working with it. Um, so we kind of seeded it out there. Um, we also have our blog as well, which we'd already been working on. Um, so they're, they're kind of the, the kind of three places that we were we were leveraging. But we also did a um, a campaign with uh, beta list. So we listed on on, on beta list, and that like that pumped in a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of initial users, and that was kind of the start of the uh, of the of the I guess marketing, if you will. So I can understand what you did within Twitter to engage with people, and I think that might be fairly obvious to people in the audience. How did you leverage LinkedIn in, in your case? Like, what did you do on LinkedIn to uh, to to promote the page and to promote the concept, uh, the, the product that you guys were, were doing? Actually, we we originally started just with our own networks. You know, the first the first bit of marketing I guess I did was like talk. You know, was 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 just posting to my own network about uh, about what I was up to. As I said earlier, like we started with our own network, of course, before we like grew out from there. And uh, and and you know, we each were just talking about about school post on on there, just in a you know in a public public place, um, in a couple of groups. And uh, and we went from there. It was it was like I guess more of a like a grassroots kind of effort when it comes to uh, LinkedIn, but um, that was like in the, in the earlier days. Did you go about finding influencers or influential communities to promote the uh, to promote the concept to? Like, did you look for like Reddit groups on productivity, or you, know, you mentioned LinkedIn yeah. groups that you, you may have gone and talked to some specific LinkedIn groups, but. How did you go about finding those people or those locations online where you wanted to talk about uh, your solution? Yeah, we did. Um, we certainly did, and, and uh, you know that ties in with our blog as well. Of course, you know our blog is all about you know with this challenge of, of finding the best way to work. It's not only about technology; it also has to be about methodology and, and know-how. Actually, so you know, we're, although we're building a product and we want lots of users, we're also building a like an active community of people that are talking about productivity and trying to find the best ways to work because. You know, our theory is that it's, it, it, it's not just us solving this problem. We want to do it as a community um, and make sure that we you get feedback along the way about the product, but also that we're solving this pro problem for people more broadly. So the blog comes in there when, it, you know, when you think about, like, the knowledge sharing element. We want to make sure that we've got tips and tricks on the blog, that we've got, um, you know, uh, experts contributing uh, guest posts and, uh, and, and, that, and that sort of thing. So we, we tied the blog into our social efforts. So, yeah, we did go out to... Um, find influencers, and in fact, I did engage on LinkedIn with a bunch of uh, people that had written really interesting articles, and just engaged with them directly, connected with them, asked them if they were interested in like sharing some content, um, which which most of them were. Um, and uh, yeah, I also looked into a bunch of uh, you know, there's LinkedIn groups you can join for whatever your specific category or niche is. Um, for us, there's a, you know, there's a getting things done group, which is a you know big productivity methodology by David Allen. And, uh, and, you know, that's a pretty active group. Uh, LinkedIn's a little tough. It's a little spammy these days. Um, but, uh, but, you know, it's certainly still good to have, like, there are some real conversations you can have with people. But, uh, but uh, you know, I always find that those one-on-one -on -one connections are the most powerful, to be honest. Absolutely. I mean, I ask specifically because we, we hear that we hear that quite often that the the number one source um, for for leads and and for for seeding traffic is from sort of that the the influencer community and making some personal connections and getting them to talk about you because you have the audience you have right, but other people have the audience that you don't have yet that you would like to have, and so your best bet is always to be to seek out the audience that you don't have yet that share the similar mindset of what you're promoting, and so. Uh, and it ends up being typically the the most valuable strategy. And, and would you say that was the case? And, and aside from the referral strategy you guys were doing, would you say that was the most important thing you guys did for marketing was creating those connections and getting them to talk about your 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 solution? Look, you know, I have a uh, I have a sales background. I spent a bunch of time in, in sales. I think the best marketers are people that uh, uh, are you know engage directly with their customers. Number one. Right, so um, you know, I, I started in sales, technology sales, so that was natural for me. I was used to having conversations with people. I think you've got to be wary of marketers that are in an ivory tower, kind of pulling the levers and uh, and just kind of I don't know, not in touch with the individuals that are 
you know, using their product or service. So for me, the number one thing is really to engage with the users that we had and to understand that. But, you know, that, that very quickly leads to other people as well. And, and, you know, whether they're influencers or not, but yeah, I think, I think you've got to have those conversations to really understand your audience and to understand what's driving them. And, um, and that, you know, that's certainly the case with us, but yeah, influencers are definitely a part of that. And you mentioned something that, uh, that that I also like asking about, which uh, which comes up frequently in, in questions. So, you're running this campaign. You're getting thousands of emails. Um, the the referral engine is is working. During the course of the campaign, what were you doing to actively stay engaged with those users during the campaign to keep them sharing, to keep them interested, to keep them engaged while you were building the product behind the scenes? Um. We, you know, we, we, we obviously just kept in touch with them. You know, we sent, uh, we sent uh, emails out to them. We, uh, we surveyed some of them. Um, but most importantly, I think we just were really, uh, like this is an area of, of passion for a lot of people. You, like that, you know, that, that, I don't know. I don't think that's particularly specific just to our, our you, know, um, you know, problem space. But people really feel strongly. Like a lot of people feel really strongly. I mean, if I ask you about email, and how you use email, or, or most people about email, I think, you know, a lot of people will go on a rant. The platform to, to have that, you know, that voice and that communication. So at every step, we just made we made it very clear that we were passionate about this too, and that you know we uh, you know we want to hear from them. We want to talk to you. So we encourage people, and, and to this day, I encourage every new user to communicate with us. Whether it's you know questions about productivity, whether it's uh, feedback they have on the product, whether they want to join that community more broadly and just read about what other people are saying, like I just really we would we I think if you just genuinely you know, interested in what people have to say, that's a key thing. So, you know, that's been a focus for us, just getting getting that message to our to our to our you know user base and to uh, the people involved with school posts and just make sure that, you know, we really want to hear from you. Like it's a really important thing. We don't think that we've got all the answers. Like we're hundred percent committed to getting to a, a, a place where our product is a must have product for as many people as possible. But that's not an easy thing to achieve. And you know, the only way we're going to get there is from learning from the community and continuing to iterate and, and perfect it. And that is like what we've done from day one, and that's what we continue to do today. Great. And, and I mean, I brought that up. It seems obvious to, to you guys, obviously, but we, you know, I see so many. Uh, yeah, I'm signed up for a lot of uh, a lot of launch campaigns, obviously, as, uh, as I talk to a lot of uh, a lot of customers. And there's nothing that bothers me more than seeing people miss that opportunity for engagement. Of you know, I signed up and then. I'll get an email six months later from this company that says, "Hey, now we launched, and you know, I've forgotten that I signed up for it, and they were a customer of ours." And it, and it bothers me. I was like, "You missed so much opportunity to talk to me, to convince me about what you're doing. That that's, you know, that's that's an important part, not just for the campaign itself, but for building those customer relationships and for uh, getting people to ultimately make a purchase decision on your product down the road when when you've got it when you've got it available." Um, and so many people just miss out on those those opportunities for engagement, and so it sounds like you guys didn't. <laughs> well, I think you can't under underestimate the speed of change when it comes to online technology. Like I was saying about um, you know marketers in uh, you know today, like like most marketers don't have a marketing background. It's changing now, but you know if, if you look ten years ago, the marketing industry was completely different, right? It was uh, you know it was about ad spend, it was about you know branding. It was about like communication, people with a communications background. Now marketing is, is like almost like it, it's really, it's about technology. It's like really almost 100% about technology. So you've got all of these people coming into marketing and just kind of found themselves there. They, don't, they maybe didn't set out to be marketers, but they ended up in marketing. And that's just a, that is a commentary on the, the speed of change. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying anything new probably, but like you can't underestimate that. And so when, when someone signs up for your product and they indicate that they're interested, um, you know, you want to make sure that you capitalize on that when you've got their attention because you can be guaranteed their attention isn't going to be there for very long. Absolutely. 
Um, so we're getting close to wrapping up. Um, we had some conversion rate and, and boost numbers, but you guys were using our product in a really interesting way. So this isn't actually your viral boost and your conversion rate numbers. Uh, would you mind kind of sharing in broad terms what you guys yeah. saw for an initial conversion rate and what percentage of your leads were coming from that referral mechanism? So we had, I mean, we, we, we improved our conversion rate significantly from like what would be a more standard, maybe like five to 10% conversion rate. We actually got it up to 25% plus, which is the highest conversion rate I've, uh, I've ever experienced as a marketer. And I think that's testament to, um, you know, partially the, the, the space that we're in, but also the, um, you know, we, as I keep saying, we really tried to understand what people are doing in the space and talk to that need that they have. Um, and, and the feedback we had from people was really useful in doing that. And of course, A-B testing goes along with that. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, we got the conversion rate to 25% plus, which was awesome. And then we, we um, you know, built in this viral mechanism. So we had kind of these two calls to actions on our thank you page, you know, the, the Kickoff Labs thank you page. And that was, you know, um, tweet. So tweet and tell other people, which, which then brought a bunch of, more people back, you know, other people back in. But then we also had this email um, email capability where you could put in up to like 10 or 20 um, email addresses and directly invite people that you know. And as a result of those two things, it actually ended up boosting our numbers by another 25 to, to 30%. So, you know, it was actually a really significant uh, uh, referral boost, if you will. So roughly, you know, it- 25 or you know 35 percent of the people coming through are coming from a referral from other people is what is what I he- I'm hearing. Absolutely, that's uh, that's that's fantastic. So um, I, I don't know if uh, I, I haven't looked at the uh, the chat. Izzy, are there any uh, are there any questions that uh, that we sh- we could answer? Specifically, um, we had a couple questions. Um, but it looks like you guys kind of pretty much answered. They were kind of just wondering how, you know, what what other type of of ways uh, they actually generated buzz uh, regarding the actual campaign, whether they were featured in like publications or blogs. But uh, you know, it was actually answered that they were doing some some you know a lot of one to one reach out via LinkedIn. Um, are there any other things that that you guys did, Paul? You know, to actually promote the actual campaign? Anything? You know, I guess. A better question would be like, what what would you guys consider that was the best strategy that worked? You know, as far as getting people to the page, as far as getting people to actually sign up and convert. Yeah, look, um, um, I was going to say that. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we we. Um, I guess the main mechanisms, as I said, were kind of like, you know, social and blogging, like com- com- content marketing and social marketing kind of the big things. But, you know, we're in, we're a beta product, like we're still in beta right now. So we haven't gone out and done uh, <clears throat> any big splash marketing. And I think that's, you know, uh, we haven't done any big launches or any PR or anything like that. So everything we've done, we consider to be like really organic kind of growth, organic acquisition and organic growth including all of the stuff we did with, with Kickoff Labs and all of the referral mechanisms we implemented. So uh, I guess, as I said, Twitter, Twitter's been a really big, uh, a really great source of traffic for us. Um, and other than that, you know, it, it's blogging, it's outreach, and, uh, and, and all the referral stuff. So, I mean, I, I, would, I would actually put up the, uh, the referral campaign as, as a, a significant win for us. It's something that I'll do again. Outstanding. Um- so any final bit of advice you would give to somebody who's uh, you know, going through the process of starting, starting their own company or you know, what, what's really important and, and just sort of like one bit of advice you would give to somebody who is about to go through the journey that you've gone through in the last few months? Um, <clears throat> where do I start? Uh, <laughs> just uh, I guess drawing from our own experience, I would just say learn as much as you can, as quickly as you can, and as affordably as you can. I don't like get get started quickly. You, you know, it's gonna it's very unlikely you'll be able to develop and implement your end goal, your end game first. You know, start start with something that you can test, that you can um, put out into market, and and learn as quickly as you can. And not just um, from a product perspective, I would also say from a um, from a marketing perspective too. You want to you want to start testing um, your 
ideas and, and messages as early as you can because as I said, you know, um, people have ideas, they have product, they might have produced the best product in the world, but if you're not really trying to understand um, how people think about that challenge, the problem that you're solving for them and kind of to the down to the degree of like what words they use to describe that problem, then I think you're missing an opportunity. So you want to get you want to get started doing that as quickly as you can, and then learn and iterate from there. I mean, that's that that would be my advice. So start learning as quickly as you can, and and start you know as efficiently as you can is is the number one bit of advice. And I think that's a, I think that's a, that's a best, fantastic bit of advice for people. Um, yeah. And get to know your audience as well. Like I can't I can't emphasize that again. I'm a, I'm a, like a I'm a di digital marketer, but I'm a hand-to-hand -hand combat guy as well. So I really like to, um, you know, speak to our. I mean, I've spoken to literally hundreds and hundreds of our users and the people that have come through, uh, if not thousands. And uh, and and you know, it is it is illuminating what people can tell you about your own product. That they bring different perspectives to the table. Um, you know, that they tell you about like the, the messaging they had, whether there was a disconnect from the website, you know, to the thank you page, to the product, like to the emails you send out, like that sort of stuff that you think you know, but you, you never really know until someone actually tells you. So just get to know the people that, you know, are in your audience as intimately as you possibly can. <laughs> We have one final question in the chat. It's from uh, TST Fam, and he is asking, how many emails did you guys start with and where are you at now? I know that you weren't going to be sharing specifics, but yeah. uh, but you, uh, I mean, in our title of the event, we'd said that it was thousands. We actually mentioned that it was probably up there in the tens of thousands. Obviously, we don't want to be super specific, but, um, but I mean, I just want to be clear that that you know, it didn't happen for you guys overnight. You guys have been, you know, consistently collecting leads, as you said, for, for several months now, and that's how you guys have actually reached that number, right? Yeah, look, I mean, where do we start? Like, I guess we, we you know, we did have a, we did have a bunch of leads um, before we implemented the Kickoff Labs thing, but it was a small number, and, um, and um, you know, as I said, to keep, like, kind of to kick it off, we, we did list on, on beta list, which was a little, little bump in, in traffic and, and leads, um, and then we grew from there, and it is, as you said, like it's you know it's in the in the kind of tens of thousands. Uh, I won't give the specific number, um, and it's and it's you know it's changing every day, it's growing every day. And um, but yeah, we, we we were really interested in building mechanisms that 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 scaled and that um, and that kind of ran themselves in a sense as much as possible. So uh, yeah, that, that's kind of what we did. So my final question is uh, is what's next for Scribble Post? What do you guys? What do you got? What's what's in the next immediate future for for your company? Good question. Well, you know, it is the world's productivity network, so we, we, we want to get the world onto the productivity network. Um, growth. I mean, you know, my, I live and breathe growth. Um, it's all about uh, that. Our product is actually, um, you know, it's, it's pretty robust at this point. So we've got, you know, we have many people using it every day, which is uh, very exciting for us. And, um, and, you know, we continue to iterate. We release new updates uh, and features, like, basically every two weeks, like clockwork. Um, and uh, and you know we're just we're just growing from here, and we want to take to the point where it's a, you know it's a household name, I guess, like like most kind of tech startups. Great. Um, and so, how can people how can people get in touch with you uh, or Scroll Post if they want? I've, I've left on this last slide for comments and questions. People can email support at Kickoff Labs if there's comments and questions on this specific webinar and topic. But if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, Paul, or with uh, Scribble Post as a company, what's the best way for them to reach out? Uh, I guess the number one thing to do is you can go to our website, which is www.scribblepost.com. Um, I can't believe I just said the Ws. Anyway, forgive me for that. Um, it's so old school. Um, but uh, yeah, otherwise, if you want to contact me, just email me. It's paul at scribblepost.com, or you can reach out to me on Twitter, um, which is just at paul underscore burko, B-E-R-K-O. Um, and yeah, if you wanted to, I mean, there's always support at schoolpost.com as well, which is, uh, you know, there's a bunch of us there waiting for the messages and helping people use the product and answering questions and, and things like that. So yeah, I'd love, love to hear from anyone that's out there that's interested in, in the product space, in the product, um, even in the marketing, whatever, whatever, I'm very open to having a conversation. Great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us today. I think there was a ton of really useful information here, a ton of great tips for people. 
Um, and I'd love to hear what anybody thinks. So feel free to hang out in the chat. Let us know what you think, thought about the conversation, or feel free to drop us a line at support at kickofflabs.com and let us know what you'd like us to chat about next. Uh, thanks again, Paul. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. You too.